Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. And today I would like to complete a mini series that I started long ago but uh, neglected to finish. And that was um, some material on how we disciple new believers, how we disciple new disciples. And it's based on some material from David Pawson's book, The Normal Christian Birth. And he talks in there about four spiritual doors that the new believer needs to pass through in order to have a healthy start in the Christian life. Those four doors are to repent of your sins towards God, to believe in the Lord Jesus and put your trust in him, and to be baptised in water. And fourthly and finally, to receive the Holy Spirit. And it's this last one I, I neglected to do last time uh, and which I want to look at today. I was reminded that I'd not finished the series when we looked at a passage in Acts chapter 19 a few weeks ago uh, as a church, which talks about Paul in Ephesus. And, um, and Paul finds some believers there and he starts talking with them and he gets to know them. And he's prompted to ask the question, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they say, no, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Paul says, well, what baptism did you receive then? And they say, oh, well, the baptism of John, i.e. John the Baptist. And Paul says, ah, well, you see, John taught a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. So they've gone through door one, you know, that's good. Um, but John taught about believing in the one who was to come after him, namely Jesus. We know his name now. And, and so upon hearing this, the believers are baptised in water into the name of Jesus. And then Paul lays his hands upon them and prays that they might receive the Holy Spirit, which they do. And this is expressed um, tangibly through them starting to speak in tongues and prophesying. So how do we do the same? You know, Paul, as an expert disciple, saw that they hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit. He was obviously knew that something wasn't quite right, and that prompted the question, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they hadn't done, and he, he laid his hands upon them. How can we do this as disciples and new believers? Well, I think we need to make space for this, maybe after baptism in water, we might pray for them in the pool, but meet up with them afterwards as well. And, uh, and explain a little bit who the Holy Spirit is, because they may not ever have heard of the Holy Spirit or quite understand what he does uh, in, in our lives. To explain that, um, to take away any of the mystery about that, uh, and, to, uh, and to explain the process that will happen. And you might say, you might perhaps get a couple of people to pray for them in a quiet place, uh, a private place, uh, and, to, and to say, why don't you ask your Father in heaven to give you the Holy Spirit? Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. He later says, if, um, if, if you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him or who go on asking him? And so, and so encourage that, the believer to ask their Father in heaven for the gift of the Holy Spirit and, and, uh, and pray for them. And, and then make it just a bit of time for silence, perhaps to allow the Holy Spirit to start ministering to them inwardly and for that, 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 that living water, that fountain of the, of the life of the Spirit to start welling up inside them. Um, you might want to ask after a little while what, what they're experiencing and, uh, and to encourage them to start putting that into, into words if they haven't already. The Ephesians start to speak in tongues and to prophesy and I think once the Holy Spirit starts doing something in our heart that will be expressed through our mouths, whether it's through uh, through tongues or uh, through prophetic utterance or through spontaneous prayer or praise um, or even if it's groans or sighs you know when a, when a newborn baby is born uh, if they don't make a noise there's a there's a problem isn't there um, but if if they come out they, they they use their lungs for the first time they gulp in air and they start to make a noise wow and it might be inarticulate at first because the soul's not learned how to speak yet um, but it might come out uh, in, in, in sentences, it might come out in praise, it, it might come out in a sigh or a groan, but there should be some evidence of an inward change that we're looking for. And if we haven't seen that yet, that, then we need to keep on meeting with that person and praying together and making space. Don't put pressure on them, don't be too prescriptive because it will look different for different people, uh, but you are looking for something, that, a sign that the Holy Spirit has moved in and, and is determined to uh, claim this life. It's their birthright in Christ through the blood of Jesus to be in receipt of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and we need to pray for that and help them to encounter that. Because, uh, because if, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, how can we even begin to live the Christian life? We need God's life and power and peace and presence bubbling up in us and through us so that we might ourselves become ministers of the Holy Spirit. So think about that this week, how you might um, help someone else to receive the Spirit or yourself be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit as we go out into his harvest fields.